I'm gay. So what? Don't judge. My butt. My butt. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Blink 182 MBA. Yes, people are starting to call me that and I'm pretty happy with that actually. I take it as a compliment. Today, we are going to rank Blink 182's albums from worst to absolute best. Nine albums, including Buddha, which is a demo album, I guess you could say. I won't talk about the EPs. I might do a separate video on them though. If you want a separate video on the EPs, like Dogs Eating Dogs and They Came to Conquer Uranus, then please do drop a comment down below and I will get around to doing that video because I think those are very underrated. And little disclaimer here, none of these albums I think are bad. Okay, just because I'm ranking them from worst to best does not mean that I think any of them are bad. I think all of them are great. I love every single Blink-182 song, every single one. I listen to all of them regularly. I have done for the last 20 years of my life. Take this with a pinch of salt. Don't get too offended if one of your favorite albums happens to be at the bottom of the list. And comment down below what you think. How would you rank the albums? Which is your favorite? Which is your least favorite and why? Comment it down below. Let's start a discussion. These are just my personal opinions and the opinions of people that I've seen either commenting on other videos, commenting on my videos and my friends as well. Me and my friends, you know, we all grew up together playing Blink-182 covers in our bedrooms and our garages, playing them in the car, listening to my parties, etc. So number nine neighborhoods. Now the reason that this album left a bit of a bad taste in my mouth personally is because they cancelled their 2011 UK and Europe tour in order to make this album. I understand they probably had some pressure from the record label or management but they actually cancelled a tour so that they could complete this album and then go out and play the songs live on stage on tour. And due to the fact that so many of us were so excited that they got back together in 2009. We were so looking forward to seeing them in 2011. And for that to be postponed a year was a pretty big deal to us. We were pretty disappointed. I understand that recording an album, you know, it takes a lot. You've got to write it, you've got to record it, you've got to mix it, you've got to master it, then you've got to do all the promotion. You've got to do interviews, you've got to do live TV performances, you've got to do local shows around your area. So it was a shame that they canceled the tour. And the thing was, right, the album, when it actually did come out, it just didn't live up to the expectations we had of it. I really love some of the songs on there. I really love This Is Home. I like Kaleidoscope. But the first single they released, Up All Night, was not well received at all. I actually quite enjoyed it personally, but a lot of my friends were just saying they thought it was awful. And I think it's because it was very simple and very abrupt. It finished very abruptly. It's the, the song is basically intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, outro. That's it, that's, that's it. It's a short song, it was very simple. It just didn't live up to the expectations, but obviously people had high expectations. This is their favorite band who they've listened to for over a decade. They were really excited for this album and it just wasn't great. I find that a lot of the songs on there are quote unquote filler and from what I've seen, a lot of people agreed with this. And I think if you spoke to the band these days about that album, they would probably agree that it wasn't the best experience. First of all, due to the fact that Tom had his own separate studio in San Diego and then Mark and Travis were recording in LA, I think. So there wasn't that much communication going on. They're recording at separate locations and they both had different ideas about where the album should go. And also the fact that these days, and even on the final tours with Tom, they were hardly acknowledging that album. They, I don't think they play any songs for that album live anymore. And like I said, a lot of it was filler. There was a few good songs and there's some songs I like. There's some songs that I've seen other people like and doing covers and stuff of, of YouTube because they really like the song. But there are people in the comments section saying, eh, yeah, wasn't too keen on this album. And there's other people saying, ah, oh, it's an underrated album. So a lot of mixed opinions on Neighborhoods. Number eight, Buddha. Now, this originally was actually gonna be quite a bit higher on my list because I do love it, I really do. But I figured what's the point when so many songs from the album made it onto Cheshire Cat anyway, and the versions of them on Cheshire Cat sounded better. Strings, TV, Carousel, Romeo and Rebecca. A lot of the songs made it onto Cheshire Cat anyway, and Cheshire Cat's a fantastic album, which we'll get into in a bit. But yes, the production on Buddha, as it's a demo album, obviously not great. I really liked the sound back then. I really liked what they were going for, this sort of four chord descendant style skate punk. But I believe that as time went on, they evolved into more of a pop punk band, and that just suited 
them better. But I really love the sound on that album and it is a fantastic album. But yes, as I said, as so many songs from it made it onto later releases anyway, then number eight goes to Buddha. Number seven, California. Now, the original California, I wasn't too fond of. And some people have actually commented on my videos saying that they thought California was a quote, money grab. This album actually performed really well. I think it went to number one on Billboard. It's got some fantastic songs on there, but I actually preferred the deluxe version. My favorite song from the entire deluxe version is 6-8 because it's so, original, but not original in a bad way, because sometimes Blink-182 have tried to do something original or different, and it just hasn't worked. It's worked. It's fallen flat, which is also kind of what happened on the Neighborhoods album with the inclusion of lots of synthesizers and stuff. San Diego, again, a really, really good song. I really enjoy that song. It's a good album. I really, really thought that for a first effort with Matt Skiba, because obviously he only joined a year before, they were trying to find their sound, they were just figuring things out, that it's really, really great. It's just, besides the song 6-8 and some of the other songs, it didn't add anything new to the mix. It just sounded like a copied and pasted album, if that makes sense. You'll also notice that a lot of the songs use the exact same riff. I'm not sure if this is just due to they wanted it to be that way, or perhaps producer John Feldman suggested they do it that way. And that riff is usually note 8th, 5th, note 8th, 5th, note 8th, 5th, no eight fifth. Also, I found that the chord progressions were very samey. Obviously, this is to be expected with Blink-182. I mean, look at Take Off Your Pants and Jacket. That album uses the same chord progression quite a lot, but every song is very, very different. I found on this album it was either C, G, A, F, of course, or it was C, D, E, F. Whilst this is kind of normal for Blink-182, but also pop punk and punk rock in general, and a lot of a lot of songs use this chord progression. Again, until they released the deluxe version of it, it just didn't have anything new to offer. Number six. Now, I might get some hate for this one, but I think self-titled album comes in at number six. I love this album and I love so many songs of this album, but for a lot of people around the time when it was released, it was just too much of a change too quickly. To go from Enema of the State to Take Off Your Pants and Jacket to summertime, fun, upbeat pop punk albums. And this is what I meant earlier when I said that experimenting but it falling flat and going wrong. It really polarized their audience. People were expecting a pop punk fun album, which feeling this with the first single from that album certainly gave that to people. And it had that blend of the new sound they were going for combined with the old sound, which was fantastic. You know, upbeat chorus, really good sing-along catchy hooks. But people did not take well to songs like I Miss You and Down. These were getting a lot of flack back on MSN Messenger when we had group chats on MSN Messenger, you know, 20 years or 15, 20 years before WhatsApp. I just remember people just were not keen on those releases whatsoever. But then again, you had Always, which is just one of their best songs of all time. Such an incredibly well-written song. And I think, Internally, they were starting to struggle as a band during this time, especially as Boxcar Racer had basically just finished their tour, their little stint there. Some of the ideas for Boxcar Racer that Tom had, it felt like some of them gently, slightly merged into the self-titled album. And going back to what I said about Neighborhoods, again, the Tom influence on that album. I don't want to throw him under the bus too much, but the Tom influence on that album, it just didn't seem to work as much because even though the drumming was fantastic and very different to any drummers which have played in Angels and Airwaves. So many of the songs on that album sound like they could definitely very, very easily have been released by Angels and Airwaves. Ghost on the Dance Floor, if that had different drumming, could easily pass for an Angels and Airwaves song. I would also say This Is Home as well, that could definitely pass for an Angels and Airwaves song. If you listen to Surrender by Angels and Airwaves and then compare it to some of the songs on Neighborhoods, it, it sounds like it's kind of merging into one, and those are very separate entities, you know, those bands are very separate entities. Number five, Nine. Now, I really, really, really like this album. It's, again, mixed reviews. Some people didn't like it. I really, really like it because it felt like it offered things which were different to the California album and were different to Neighborhoods, but were still close enough to the Take Off Your Pants and Jacket and Enema of the State and Dude Ranch era that it was still a fun pop punk album. The one thing I didn't like was the Blame on My Youth song. I think releasing that as the first song from this album gave everyone the bad idea. They were like, nope, nope. But as soon as they started releasing the other songs to YouTube and Spotify, such as Pin the Grenade, people started commenting saying, 
oh yeah, if the whole album's like this, then great. This is gonna be a great album. Pin the Grenade. It definitely gave me a Take Off Your Pants and Jacket vibe. Songs like No Heart to Speak Of almost had sort of a, a vibe of how a slow song on Take Off Your Pants and Jacket, such as Story of a Lonely Guy and Stay Together for the Kids would have had, right? Dark Side was a good single release. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, there's just, there's not a song on that album that I dislike. There's no, but I mean, I don't really dislike any Blink-182 song, but there's no song on that album where I'm like, oh, this is boring or, oh, this is terrible or, oh, it just doesn't sound enough a Blink-like for me. <laughs> it doesn't sound happy enough, but it also doesn't have good songwriting or the songwriting's very lazy on it. Number four, Cheshire Cat. Opening Cheshire Cat with the extended version of Carousel. I just love that so much. I remember covering it when I was like 11, year old, 11 years old with my friends. The production on it is better than Buddha. There's some bangers on it. It's so fun to listen to. It's a real skate punk, punk rock, pop punk album of the 90s. It's gritty, it's fun, it's upbeat, it's fast. Every song is just about like teenage funny stuff. Yeah, I, I just can't find a fault in Cheshire Cat whatsoever. As far as like first major albums go, because Buddha wasn't a major album, it was a demo album as far as first major albums go from a punk rock band in the 90s. Can't fault it. Number three, Dude Ranch. Come on, guys. Waggy, Josie, damn it. These are Blink-182 classics. This is when they were converting from skate punky punk rock into their traditional pop punk sound with teen angst and cool, funny stories in their lyrics. Songs about a girl, songs about fun, songs about partying, which really is what did so well on Enema of the State and Take Off Your Pants and Jacket, the teen angst combined with teen, teen partying and having fun. And yeah, it was just a, such a good transition there. This is when they were really starting to find themselves. And Waggy, I think Waggy is probably my number one all-time favorite song by Blink-182 as well. Okay, number two and one was so difficult to decide between because the first album I ever bought was Take Off Your Pants and jacket. I bought it from Virgin Megastore at an airport. Do you remember those? We don't have them anymore in England. I don't know if you have them in America still, but they went years and years ago. But yes, I was at an airport about to board a flight. I had a CD player, portable CD player, a Walkman, and I needed music for the flight. And I went and spent like 11 pounds, so about $15 on that album. As soon as I heard that first Anthem Part 2 riff, I was like, oh man, this is great. The bass line leading into the drums speeding up, leading into the na -na 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 the really nice guitar, layered guitar parts. That was just incredible. Then going into online songs, first date, and then in the middle of the album, slowing it down, story of a lonely guy, stay together for the kids, and then at the end, speeding it up with reckless abandon. And if you had the deluxe edition, please take me home on there. And that's why this album is number two. It's such a fantastic album. And the production quality on this, fantastic. The different layers of the guitars, Tom DeLonge's voice is at its peak. It sounds fantastic. The production on the vocals are great. Travis Barker, his second album with the band sounding incredible. The drumming on Anthem Part 2, for example, the the drum beat is just so good. It's so creative. It's so different to how any other drummer would play it. They just go boom, 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 but he's going like hitting the cymbals, hitting the toms in the middle of the beat. Just fantastic. Yeah, I love that album. It's got to be number two, but number one, of course, has to be Enema of the State. I mean, it was their breakout album. Mark himself has said that What's My Age Again was their breakout single, followed by, of course, All The Small Things was just incredible. And what's cool about that is Mark wrote What's My Age Again, Tom wrote All The Small Things, and those two were their breakout singles. Both of them blew it up. Each singer writes a song, blew it up. Travis Barker's first album with the band. The production was incredible. If you actually break down All The Small Things, for example, and you hear the keyboards in the background, the synths even, the different guitar, the backing vocals, the amount of reverb, it's its just fantastic. It's such a good album. Jerry Finn, obviously Jerry Finn, integral to just making them sound incredible during this 1998 to like 2003 period. It was just so, so good. I just, I yeah, it was their breakout album. And that's why it's number one, you know, it's what made them popular. All the small things made it onto so many movie soundtracks. They were featured, some of their songs like Mutt, were featured on the American Pie soundtrack, and that's when they had a cameo in that movie as well. Yeah, just incredible. That's got to be number one for how it just skyrocketed, skyrocketed their career, going from Dude Ranch, which was still a bit nitty-gritty punk rock, but more pop-punky, 
then, you know, Cheshire Cat before that was very nitty gritty punk rock, then to straight up Enema of the State, incredible production, pop punk anthem, fantastic summertime album. I had a hard time deciding what would be number one, but that has to be it. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed ranting to you guys about it. Thank you so much. One more time, hit the subscribe button and let me know what you think down in the comments below. How would you order them and which is your favorite and least favorite album?